In this video, I'll look at why the diet industry is so successful and I'll cover four of the most popular current diets, keto, paleo, intermittent fasting, and very low energy diets. Diet books are amongst the top selling books globally. In Australia, it is estimated we spend nearly $310 million trying to lose weight. This includes low calorie food, supplements, and counseling services. There are so many diets out there, it can get really quite confusing for people. There's keto, there's paleo, zone, fasting, Atkins, low fat, high fat, blood type, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, meal replacements, the list goes on. I'm often asked about my opinion on different diets. What we do know about diets is that most will work and result in weight loss in the short term, either by restricting the amount you eat or changing what you eat. However, the evidence suggests that in the long term, they don't work. The weight just comes back on. Coaches need to be in the game for the long haul. Weight loss is not easy and it takes a lot of time. Our bodies are designed to store fat for times when food is scarce, but the problem is that we never face any food scarcity anymore. Energy dense food is available everywhere and in bigger and bigger portions. We are living in an obesogenic environment. That is one where it's harder to be normal weight than it is to be overweight or obese. More screen time, less physical activity, and the availability of super tasty foods are contributing factors. Many people I have met are no longer in tune with their hunger signals and don't know what it's really like to feel hungry. The diet industry exists because diets don't work. People try them and keep coming back to try another diet. The thing is, if dieting actually works, then the obesity problem would be solved. But equally, if diets didn't work, people would stop buying the book or buying the supplements and signing up to online programs. So what's happening is that these diets seem to work and produce enough short-term results for some people to justify the diet's existence but they really do fail to produce long-term results for most people. Researchers from the University of Minnesota conducted a review of over 100 studies and found that the average weight loss on diets was less than a kilogram over two to five years. What a lot of trauma and rules and restrictions to go through for such a poor outcome. And people don't blame the diet for not working, they blame themselves for lack of willpower there's a lot of shame and body hate and low self-esteem surrounding dieting. Research indicates that dieting is the number one risk factor for developing an eating disorder. All the restrictions and counting calories and macronutrients can be psychologically destructive. And restricting calories actually creates a psychological stress response which facilitates weight gain, not weight loss. So why don't diets work? Well, the main reason is that when we reduce energy intake rapidly, the body goes into a famine reaction. This means that metabolism slows down, appetite increases, and physical activity decreases. These adaptations prevent further weight loss and the weight just comes back on. In fact, one to two thirds of weight loss is regained within one year, and almost all is regained within five years and at least one third of dieters regain more weight than they lost. So if diets don't work, what do we do? Well, we come back to the basic simple advice. Eat food, not too much, mainly plants. When Michael Pollan says food, he's referring to whole unprocessed foods like vegetables, fruits, meat, dairy, whole grains, and he calls those other super processed items found in the supermarket food-like substances. When he says not too much, he's referring to portion sizes. Most Australians really do need to rein in the portion sizes. Mainly plants refers to the need to highlight vegetables as the hero foods. What gets results in the long term? A slow reduction in energy intake over time, coupled with exercise gets results. Aim for two to four kilograms of weight loss per month. Also, having a break from energy restriction is really important to reduce the famine reaction. This is called interval weight loss. So you lose a bit, then maintain. Lose a bit more, then maintain, and so on. 
This is a graph of Google search trends in Australia. The term paleo in red, keto in blue. In 2014, there was very little interest in keto. Everyone was doing paleo. But as we fast track five years forward and further, keto then becomes a more popular search term, a trend that looks to continue. Originally used in the 1920s as a treatment for epilepsy, the keto diet has now gained popularity over the last decade for use in weight loss. The keto diet is a low carb, high fat diet along a similar vein to the Atkins diet of the 1970s. In a standard diet, the body uses glucose from the breakdown of carbohydrate rich foods as the primary energy source. A keto diet forces the body to use fat as the main fuel source instead as the diet severely restricts carbohydrate intake, down to 5 to 10%. This is termed ketosis and it mimics a fasting state. It's a normal reaction when food is limited and makes the body rely on its own fat stores. By changing macronutrient ratios by reducing carbohydrate intake, the body switches to using ketones, which are a byproduct of the breakdown of fat as energy. Now the diet is difficult to follow, and it's also high in fat. I've heard of people using syringes to inject olive oil into their mouths to increase fat intake. If we compare the keto diet to the Australian dietary guidelines, we can see a lot more fat and lower carbohydrate percentages on keto. In the long term, that's over one to five years, there is strong evidence to indicate there's no difference in weight loss doing keto compared with standard energy restricted diets. The keto diet is typically low in fiber, which therefore affects gut health and potentially obesity risk. This is because we know that poor gut health is linked to obesity. The concerns many health professionals have with keto for weight loss is that it cuts out significant food groups. It can cause constipation and dehydration and can also result in micronutrient deficiencies. People often report bad breath, and keto is classically very difficult to adhere to and lead a normal life. The paleo diet is another low carb diet, although not as low carb as keto. Paleo generally means 20 to 35% of energy is obtained from fat. It is based on modern foods that mimic the foods eaten by our hunter gatherer ancestors. The diet focuses on quality protein, such as meat, eggs and seafood, nuts and seeds, and olive oil and coconut oil, as well as fresh fruits and vegetables. The diet eliminates grains, legumes, dairy, refined sugar, and processed foods. Critics suggest that it doesn't make sense to follow a diet like our predecessors for a number of reasons. Firstly, the types of food available now are vastly different to what was available then. The human genome has had time to adapt to eating other foods such as grains, and there's not one hunter-gatherer diet. Although paleo eliminates two food groups, dairy and grains, from the Australian Dietary Guidelines, it's still generally consistent with the message of reducing sugar and processed foods. So overall, the principles allow for a diet that is nutritionally superior to keto. Intermittent fasting refers to the restriction of food for a given period, followed by a period of regular eating. This can be done on alternate days or with a time-restricted approach. Whole day fasting has gained popularity in recent years with the release of Dr. Michael Mosley's 5-2 diet and the Fast 800 book. The 5-2 diet advocates five days of normal eating and two non-consecutive days of reducing energy intake to 2,000 to 2,500 kilojoules. This is about a quarter of the average energy requirements for Australians of 8,700 kilojoules per day. Another approach to fasting is time-restricted feeding. For example, the 16-8 time frame, which involves fasting for 16 hours and then eating within the remaining eight hours. 14-10 or 24 can also be followed. But does it work for weight loss? Yes, absolutely. When you reduce calories, the weight will come off. However, there's been found to be no difference in weight loss between intermittent fasting and continual calorie restriction. Also, it appears that continuous calorie restriction preserves lean mass more than intermittent fasting. Overall, the evidence suggests that intermittent fasting isn't harmful physically or mentally in healthy, normal weight, overweight, or obese adults. 
Very low energy diets have been used in clinical settings for over 40 years and are the most intensive form of dietary intervention for obesity. This diet severely restricts energy intake to less than 3,350 kilojoules per day, less than half the average Australian energy requirements. This is done by using formulated meal replacement products like shakes, soups and bars to replace all normal food. Very low energy diets often result in significant and rapid weight loss, around 1.5 to 2.5 kilograms per week, but are often nutritionally inadequate, particularly in regards to fiber and protein. This kind of diet is usually recommended for periods of up to four months for obese people who need to lose more than 8% of their weight leading into surgery or for other significant health reasons. They're not recommended for moderate weight loss. So a very low energy diet is essentially, essentially a low carbohydrate diet, high in protein and results in the body using fat for energy instead of glucose. They're the most effective short-term dietary intervention for obese people. And even though many are available over the counter at pharmacies, they must always be undertaken under the strict supervision of a GP. The reason these kinds of diets are successful is that they force people to consume fewer calories. Some common examples you might have seen include OptiFast, OptiSlim, the Cambridge Weight Plan and Tony Ferguson. In summary, restrictive diets work in the short term, but seem to be a big waste of time for those looking for long-term weight loss.